It's not recording. Oh, so. well, I just went live. It's not. It's not. Yours is not on. Am I muted? Yeah, you're muted. You're fine. Make sure I'm muted because he can still probably pick it up. It's off. I think we might have a stream. It might be ready. Give me a second. I got to go to the bathroom. Some volume. What it do, common conversations. Welcome to the Facebook Live as we record our podcast. Yeah. So y'all know the deal. We've been trying to fix this stream so that y'all can be a part low. of um you said the battery's low? No, every uh, episode. On, on the battery's low on the iPad. Yes. We ain't gonna be in the town. Yo, so all right, if you're tuning in on the um on the Facebook, you know, this is how we record our um our our, our podcast. And so we like to bring y'all in so y'all can see how we're producing it. And then later on, we're going to, um, of course, publish these out there in the world and where, where we host in Apple Pay and not Apple Pay. We want y'all to Apple, Apple Podcasts, Pay. Apple Podcasts, you know, Spotify, all that fun, other whatnot. So let's get this joint started. Or do I need to go get, do I need to go get a plug to, to keep it running? Ah, oh, shit. Hey, <laughs> somebody entertain these brothers out here. Tell them what we do. Uh, I guess I'll start off. My this is Demond from Demond Does. Uh, I'm father of two, husband of one, and leader of this here Demond cast. I, as a matter of fact, since uh, we're talking and killing time, I'm going to plug my show, Demond Does. I do the six questions, and this week was with Al Snow. Al Snow is a professional wrestler, and he now owns. Get this, the only accredited professional wrestling school. I, I'm new in the country, but might be in the world, which, if you're nerdy like me, is something that uh, that's pretty doggone cool, meaning you go to school to learn how to, be, to learn how to produce and be a professional wrestler. It's pretty dope. Um, as we do the rest of this thing, is anybody else going to talk? Trainer, how was your week, man? Tell them about yourself and tell them how your week's been, bro. Well, you know, Superman don't go nowhere without his cape. My week has been fabulous, uh, uh, learning and growing. Uh, of course, we did release episode three of Love and Soul. 
uh, with the wonderful, amazing couple, uh, Kurt and Kashanda Pierre. So check that out. It's going to be super excited um, to uh, see it. It's going to be awesome. You'll get a treat. Where we see it? Um, I posted a link on my uh, Facebook page, but I also, you know, you can go to Miguel Hampton, our YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> our YouTube channel, Miguel Hampton, and check it out on YouTube as well. Love and so. And I forgot to tell people you can find uh, you can find Demond does the six questions on anywhere you get podcasts, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, I'm on iHeartRadio, have everywhere. So there you go. And I believe Miguel has finished wiping. <laughs> yeah, man, I got some on my fingers. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's, it's always you. Is that what that is that what that smell was? My yeah. bad. No, oh, that's gross. I got other jokes, but your wife is listening. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yo, welcome. <laughs> hey. So you know, things, for people in, things out there, appear bigger in mirror, yeah, closer just, than they appear. I like your forehead. <laughs> Ooh, that's why I wear the hat. Bricks, that's why. Oh, we was we was sweet jokes. I was, no day, bro. I'm, just, I'm just throwing up stuff, trying to be funny. You want th- you want sh- shots fired? I see how it's we, gonna go. I am here to entertain. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, welcome to Common Conversations. This is the podcast. We're going live, so all our good people out there. Yes, the stream might be a little slow. We're trying to figure it out, but you know what? Look, here it is. You're with us, and we appreciate it. And if you don't get to play with us live, you can always listen to this bad boy on demand. Does the six questions when we upload them um, and you can still be a part of us. So, yo, uh, anybody out there in the world, I know y'all already shared who you is, what you do, why you do it. Y'all ready to start the show? Let's do it. Let's All do right. it. Ready music? Cute. All right. And three, two, one. Welcome to Common Conversations. This is your boy, Gella Gell, with the Odd Fellas, and we are here with you. We're going to talk about a little bit, a lot. And a little bit more. So we got an interesting show for you today. So um, as we start out, fellas, what y'all been up to? Man, just you just started it over, man. <laughs> we're almost there. We're right. almost there. Can't you, just... you just turn it off? No, that's not how this thing works, man. It's all, I it's guess all... I could. Hold on, wait a minute. Ah, oh, fade out. See, I'm learning this. I'm learning. I'm if learning. a brother knows the difference between high and low, you can go anywhere. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> Say that. But welcome to the podcast. This is our fifth podcast. Fifth, fifth. Fifth podcast. One, two, three, four, fifth. We do appreciate you. We want you to subscribe. We want you to tag along with us on this journey. And we want you to share with us as well. Um, so if, you, if you're listening to it and you want to send us a note, go ahead and send us a, a quick note on our Facebook at Common Conversations, the I fellas. That's Please. right. Um, if you yes, want to send us a video, just make it appropriate. There's only one bachelor in the room. My wife might get mad. Oh. I know mine will. <laughs> same here, same here. Other than that, um, good people, what y'all been up to? I, I've been recording. Uh, I've uh, had a new episode uh, drop just today, as a matter of fact. Just, uh, I guess, what time is it? 8 o'clock? So uh, it's been it's been out 16 hours, I guess. Anyway. Right, 16 hours. But anyway, DeMond, but it's DeMond, I interviewed uh, Al Snow. Al Snow is a professional wrestler. He was one of the, he was a popular guy during the Attitude Era. Um, he ran around, he he heard voices. This, is gonna sound, this sounds so ridiculous out of context. Yeah, because his heard, name is Al Snow and he heard voices, but I'm following you. He heard voices <laughs> and he carried around a mannequin head. The mannequin head was the one that talk, told that was talking to him. Of course, nobody else could hear him. And wait for it. What was that mannequin's name? Head, name? Head. So what did his music start off with? What does everybody want? Head. Head. You're welcome. True story. Look, welcome to the podcast. We're about to be super inappropriate today. Pause. We rolling it out, baby. Y'all missed it. Trainer was telling about we was living whoa, 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 through this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nasty stories. Hey, oh, hey yeah, I would also like to uh add uh Tia and Krista and Angel. This is not, I repeat, not influenced by me. <laughs> the one single guy in the room. This is not. This, influenced by me. This is not indicative of our <laughs> normal conversations. We're actually keeping it above board. Oh. Most of it. Hush, you ain't getting me in trouble. <laughs> but, but it is about a common conversation. And so the reality of it is if Trump can have locker room conversations, we can have brown table conversations. Let's go. Let's it got him, and it got him elected. Jeez, right. Please, please, man. Man. right. He, he, you know, he gets to dictate how trillions of dollars are being spent. And he ain't spending none with black people. So, you know, I like to, I like that you said brown table. I dig it. 
Yes, sir, most brother. Yes, sir. We got a brown table in a brown building with some brown brothers sitting in a brown. Man, look, this brown. Come on, somebody. Let's go uh, with brown yes, authors sir. and some brown illustrators on the table so we can learn more. Incognito, let's go. Let's a little bad news for outlaws. The remarkable life of Bass Reeves, U.S. Deputy, Mar- Deputy Marshal, a.k.a. So, uh, Lone Ranger. Yes, yes. So as we as we go around the table, like, we're going we gonna to share a little bit, you know, because we got to do what we do. We got to share. But we're going to do something a little different today. So we got a treat for all our listeners. Um, and so I I I have had a crush on Jada Pickett since I was a kid. Um, not so much anymore, but she's still a beautiful woman. And I do love watching their their um, Red Table Talks, which is super yes. dope. And so I think it was her daughter that was promoting um, these cards online. And so I just went home and I was like, yo, babe, we got to get these cards. We got to get these cards. And she's like, we already have them. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, there it is. So we're going to play. We're going to play a little um, red table discussion later on with each other. We didn't we're not going to follow those rules because as Trainer said earlier, I don't read manuals. I just open up the box. Just right. does stuff. And, uh, and then we got we got another cool game. Um, and this is this is so this is, you know. Super intentional. What's your world word? What's your word? And so we're gonna do that um, during this podcast as well as we as we have our common conversation. You know, this is gonna open us up um, a little bit, right? Because we're always about talking about what's it like to be a black man, what's it like to be a man. You know, married uh, man, married single man, man, single man, uncovering yeah. our vulnerabilities. Father, uh, father, yes, mm-hmm. yes, sir. so. There it is. But okay, back to that. What y'all been up to? Like, you know, what you been doing? We know Demond dropped the new the new Demond does. Um, Mr. D over there, the shadow. Yes. Dig. Yes, sir. What it up? Oh man, just been working on more recipes more than anything. I'm doing a lot of cooking lately. <laughs> as you guys uh have uh partaken of in the last two weeks. Mm. All right. Mm. Tell, tell them tell them what you made for us. Go ahead, tell them. Go ahead, tell them, tell them. Uh today's uh <laughs> fine dining adventure, aka Cooking Chronicles, the pandemic edition. Yeah, uh, for my, Mr. Miguel and Mr. Trainier, they had a smoked per- pork curry with yellow rice. And for my man here, Demond does who does not eat pork. I made him some chicken ramen, and it was delicious. So, what's with the Asian food? I'm working on fusions, really. Okay. Um, just so to, curry is fused with smoked pork. I barbecued the pork. Okay. And then used it in a curry application. So we got some redneck with some Asian. And we ready to rock. Yes, sir. And now it's Negro. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. I just <laughs> wow. I guess that is definitely one way to look at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. I just can't with that, brother. Yeah, <laughs> just can't. Just saying, and it, it's the bomb diggity. So I'm just saying, you know, fusion. There it is. They done fused our shit. We might as well. And there's $20 in it. Well, there, ooh, there was to, who took my money out the jar? I don't know what you're talking about. Look at you. Look at yeah. me, brother. I don't know what you're talking about, but dinner was delicious. I'm going to hook it up. Anybody out there who's watching or listening to the podcast and y'all want to donate some dollars to help us keep the jar full, um, you more than welcome. Just the PayPal is um, right now just F5 Enterprises. Throw it at me. Because Miguel's go. mouth is reckless. It, that's, it, a, that's an excellent reckless, word. Reckless? That's loose. an excellent Come word. On, loose, chef. loose, loose. I got a loose mouth. Loose. And I got a reckless mouth. Loose. Yeah. And I need to be paid to be a mouth holder. I'm just saying. <laughs> Because <laughs> this brother will go there. Well, 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 get a uh, dollar. I'll let your boy. My, I, I, I got little kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> they should be in bed, man. What time is it? 8 30. Have, have, have you met my kids? <laughs> nah, but I met his parents. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. Oh, my God. Trainer, what you been up to, bro? Man, I ain't been making no noise, man. Just working, grinding, st- trying to stay safe. and. Uh, what you grinding on? Love and soul. Okay. You know, <laughs> editing. I only come out to work with you. There so, it is. Let's go. You know. We're like, trying to build something. Yeah, that, that's right. No, no. We building something. That's right. There yes, it is. Yes, Talk yes, about yes. it. Let's go. And uh, that's it. Making sure my mom's good, my brother's good, and, you know, of course, we chop it up with all my friends in Atlanta, and, you know, everything's everything. All right. There it is, man. It's been it's been wild. So, I'm going to tell y'all, it's been wild for me. Like, I know we recorded last week, and I ain't shared this. It was crazy. Did you know, and 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 ladies, I, you, you, maybe y'all can share with us later, you know, shoot us some DMs or whatever, but did you know that you can have a menstrual cycle or you can come on your period without ovulating? No shit, right? How do you like? I'm, I'm a dude. I got a daughter. Never heard of this, right? But I got an eight year old, nine year old niece who apparently started her period. And I was like, how the hell? First of all, I was like, how the hell is this possible? Mm-hmm. 
So I, you know, I get the Googling. Of course, I'm talking to the wife, and I'm like, yeah, this is some weird shit, right? And so apparently, you can you can start your period without ovulating. So those of y'all don't know nothing about ovulating, go read it and go look it up. Google it; it works. I definitely don't know nothing about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, but long story short, you know, my, my baby, my baby needs to get sick, right? And so, you know, we they had to we had to rush her to the ER and and um, find out that you know she got a period and she's ov- but she ain't ovulating and it was crazy because she was in ICU and they thought she was sepsis and they're testing her with all this shit. Uh, but long story short, she she had a significant amount of blood loss, and that was causing her to, you know, of course, everybody, y- your blood is connected to your oxygen, mm-hmm. right? So when you're losing blood, you're short in oxygen. Oxygen right. don't go to the lungs. Shock. You suffocate. Um, and, and you also can kind of become delirious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she started having all these crazy symptoms, literally crazy. You know, I got to shout out, you know, um, Nurse Cheryl, my buddy, because you know, we, 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 everybody's trying to figure out what to do, what not to do. You know, it was like, let's call, let's call a friend. So it was great to have a nurse friend. Um, but I was like, how can we process? Because let me tell you, one of the local hospitals, my mom calls the, the ER. And they were like, don't bring, don't bring the baby girl here because people got COVID. That's some dumb shit, right? I'm like, how the hospital tell you not to bring the girl to the ER? And she laying on the floor in hysteria and, she, and she's suffocating. Right. So whatever. Long story short, I, you know, I call, I call Cheryl, Cheryl, like, nah, Gelly, this is what you need to do. You need to take her to Cozares. You need to blah, 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 blah. So cool. Long story short, you know, baby girl's mom comes, my sister, they go over to Cozares and, and they get her in. But man, though, the COVID got people fucked up. I'm getting a free pass on that one because the hospital over here in Clark, Clark County, I'm not going to name the hospital. Man, there's only but one. You suck. Um, real talk. <laughs> but yo, I learned. So, so people out there with kids, with daughters, definitely men with daughters, Um, super important that you really learn about female anatomy, anatomy and the things that they, they, they may have to go through so that you're prepared to take care of them when they have needs, man, just super. So that was super crazy. And then I had a bunch of stuff get stuck in customs and I couldn't get it out. So that's another story. (laughs) Out of those two stories, the one we got, (laughs) <laughs> right, right. We, well, yeah. I, I, no, but it, I mean, it's it's it's, it's really simple on, on on that um. Oh man, on the here tip he, about uh here he hysteria. Go. See, here he go. Oh, the hysteria. The okay, hysteria good. part. Almost right here. Um, about this. <laughs> the brain responds to a dip in oxygen very very rapidly. What's interesting, however, is that the br- the brain responds quicker to a dip in sugar than it does oxygen. Wow. Ooh. So if you have people that are that are maybe diabetic or suspected diabetic, and then they start talking real deliriously, and yeah, they start acting out of character, they're probably suffering from a dip in sugar. Yep, oh. because their Yo. brain will respond much quicker to a loss of sugar in the in the bloodstream. Yep. Okay. But yeah, the, um, she's probably she's probably going into a cardiogenic shock. Well, it was crazy because they put her they put her in ICU and of course they gave her blood transfusions and, and they hydrated her and they did a variety of other things and tested her for a bunch of other stuff. But, yo, man, I, I just I thought it was, you know, learn something new. And I got a daughter. She's 16 years old. Never had to experience that particular that particular situation. Um, you know, so, you know, it's great to have D at the table because y'all didn't know he was a nurse. Right. So that's why we can have this kind of conversation. MT, M- oh, MT, EMT, BBT. <laughs> um, he one of them people. BBT. XYZ. I'm just saying, if you a man, I'm out married there, to an exceptional nurse. There however. it is. He married to an exceptional let nurse. Let that breathe. Nurse let well. that breathe. So I just want to shout out, you know, our first responders, but I also want to talk to our brothers. You know, if you got daughters, you know, you planning on having kids, you, you got to really understand, you know, what our children might be facing so that you can take care of them in, in times of emergencies and that you can make really clear decisions. Because I'm going to tell you, I couldn't remember my homegirl's name to save my life. Like when I walked into the house, I was like, you know, everything was going on. And I ain't one who typically pauses in an emergency. You know, I can hit it. But you like for half a second, I told her not to tell nobody I lost my shit, too. I picked up my phone and I was like, damn, what's her name? Damn, what's who am I calling? And then finally, I figured it out, and I got the call in, and we got there. But man, bro, you gotta love your kids. Know something about your kids. All right, let's move on. That was a crazy topic. That's where my head has been like since the last week, and now we're here. So what? What's what's what else is what's good been going on? 
Mm. See, I done mm. stunted y'all with the period talk. Right, right, <laughs> right. And we got red cards on the table. Let's just do the red cards and go from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. We need to we need to figure out like some like some softball lead and stuff like talk <laughs> right. like have train there talk sports. I, yeah, you know, yeah, I can yeah. talk nerd stuff. You know, yeah. Damon, you know, Damon gives us the food of the day, and Miguel yeah. doesn't say anything until we get to the topic. <laughs> right. That's how this needs to go because you get us in trouble. He does the intro and then. Then say nothing else get until we off. get fluff, 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 heat, heat. Then we can start the show right. with you. All right, so all right, I then. did bring y'all some goodies, oh, oh, though, right? <laughs> so D Fetters. You're up yes. 100%. All right, yes, and, I, and I thought about y'all all last week. My man. Like, our whole conversation, like, I thought about everything on our conversation. Oh, right. God, right? So I brought y'all some cool toys. I went to the bookshelf. And I said, you know, let me let me let me pull out some books that I think these brothers would love, and that they can share with the fam and the friends, and some they can take with them and bring them back, um, oh. and, and then some you know like keep. So I went to the lab and I said, okay, you know, I got this joint called Optimal Living, which is a super dope book about how do you optimize your living, manage your time, you know. And we've talked about that, you know, yes. emotional intelligence is a super dope book, so I brought that in for D. You know, and then I got an emotional branding. There's a, a variety of emotional branding books. But this one book I bought, yo, um, I really enjoy. It. And it's a short book about how great things are developed in the middle of chaos. And the book itself is called Exploiting Chaos. That's right. Um, and I think the author is, he might be from, from Lexington, or maybe I bought this book in Lexington. Shit, I can't remember. Um, but his, la his first name is Jeremy, and his last name is... G U T S C H E. How you? What? 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 what last name? Gucci. 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 But if you if you go out there, go to Amazon wherever you go to buy books. Y'all gotta check this book out because it, it really it does it talks about how different corporations and how we innovate through um, different different challenges and and whatever. So and, and when I was little, my mom used to tell me, you know, if you if you want to defeat chaos, you know, stand in the middle of it and That's be right. still. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so during COVID and, and during the things that have happened in our life, some of us are facing or feeling like we're in chaos in the middle of that tornado. So I just, you know, as I was thinking about y'all, you know, and we're all challenged. I brought some cool books. My favorite book over there is the orange book. What's it say, trainer? Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to get me to get a dollar right there. The subtle art of not giving a. Uh, I said, you know what I mean? So my wife said I shouldn't be saying fuck so much on the, on the podcast. So, um, <laughs> this guy, it's always him. That's but what I got that you know, guy. That, that's a dope mm, book too, though, man. Cause it's, it's really about exactly that. Like, how do you, how do you stop caring? So not so much right. caring, but caring so much about stuff that it, things that shouldn't affect you. That's right. Affect you or right. infect you. Right. So quit sneezing on people out there. Um, <laughs> this guy so, is hilarious. And then, I, and then the other book, of course, I brought in was the um, what was it? The the bad news outlaws, because you know we said we were gonna talk about black superheroes. That's right. Um, and and so I bought that in about Bass Reeves, and so I bought some other books for them to play with. You know, definitely have to shout out E. B. Lewis, because you know you can send us some free stuff if you want. That's a dope artist, one of the best artists I I've ever had the privilege of being in the room with, and actually having a camera on. So. But brought a couple books in here, and, and man, there it is. So, all right, y'all ready to roll it out? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, so we decided we're going to play this little game. You know, we got the little red cards. We're going to fashion them around the table. We already did that. Um, so those of y'all watching, y'all can't see it. Those of y'all listening, it don't really matter. Um, <laughs> so, Makes for great, so, for great radio. So here, here's the rule, right? The rule is, is that each one of us got four cards. We're allowed to pick any one card of our choice. Um in the red batch, right? Because there's a black card. We're not using a black card. We're only using a red one. Boom. There it is. Um, and so we can choose to ask the question to any one person at the table. If you pull a red card, everybody absolutely has to answer that particular question, right? So you can direct the question to who you want to or the group. Um, red absolutely hits to hit everybody. The only rules at the table is that we what? We be authentic and honest about our answers. There is no, I'm not answering that. So you better get real creative. And we and here's the other rule. Everybody got to take a shot if you can't answer the question. Downtown, right? So we teaching y'all new drinking games, like kind of drinking. I don't history. drink. That will not happen. All right. That's right. Um, everybody got a vice. Um, <laughs> Go take a drink of coffee. All right. So here it is. Um, Trey Near, this is my question for you. Okay. All right. There it is. First question. How can I best support you in this chapter of your life? 
Wow. Yeah, nice question. Wow. Let's go. That's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, how can you best support me in this chapter of my life? Um, when I think about it just off the top of my head, I think, honestly, uh, you're already doing it. You're allowing me uh, to be in your company on a weekly basis and observe how you move. I think the greatest thing that um, I'm learning from you is really just how hard you work, your work ethic. This guy will go from, um, you know, 10, 1030 in the morning to 1030, 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, he'll sit in here and, you know, you'll hear his stomach growling. He ain't ate. <laughs> and he's steadily locked in and in a zone and gone. And so if I'm being, you know, quite honest, um, you've already you're already doing it by allowing me to come in and and really uh, learn how to really put forth a quality work ethic that can yield results. And I'm so grateful for that. And I thank you. Nah, man, I thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Who who next? Who well, trainer, you answer, you go. Okay. There it is. <sighs> we yeah, we're gonna get them samples gonna, back in there. I'm I'm gonna save this question for you, but um <laughs> We need that okay, Damon. This question is for you. What's Did brought? You hold on, <laughs> hold on. Call twelve. Call twelve. <laughs> <laughs> what out of twelve? <laughs> we got a bleeder, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, you ready, Damon? No. What's happening? No, I'm not ready. You're ready. Yes. Okay. So my question for you is: What's brought you the most unexpected joy recently? Mm. Unexpected joy? Oh gosh, I don't know. You got to take eight shots, man. That's about thirty seconds right there. Well, that's too bad because <laughs> none of y'all are big enough to make me drink. So there you go. Um, <laughs> as the smallest guy in the room, <laughs> um, unexpected joy. Ah, uh, actually. The, um, interesting. Interesting enough, I've been off work for, it's been six weeks, and I'm going to be off another three, it looks like. I'm going, I finally got an official go back to work date. And um, I've worked two, I've worked at least two jobs or had two things going on as an adult my whole entire adult life until the last three years. So I've always been busy and I've always been running around. Not that I'm not running around now, but I have to contain myself more. Um, but this time off has been really, uh, really good for me. Um, get to hang out with the kids a little bit more. That's that that's had that's had its uh, um, opportunities for learning. <laughs> um, but you know, get to hang out with the wife a little bit more. We, you know, we, I get to go out and play outside with the kids, and you know, watch you know watch them grow and develop. It's it's. And I've done some, and I've done the podcasting and doing some more things in the near future, working with you guys. So I've had a lot of opportunities in the last six weeks to uh, to do some to do some things I probably wouldn't have done. So that's probably yeah, that's the answer. That's okay. the answer I'll give you. Dope. Yeah, that's nice. Your turn, big brother. Okay, so hmm, so eeny meeny miny mo. Uh, catch it. No, 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 no. Okay, so Damon. Yes, sir. What is a moment in your wow? Uh that's maybe let me I, <laughs> no, you, no, you just started. You can't Never take mind it back. Now. You can't take it back. Holy cow. This is an just well, I I didn't Pause. read this I didn't read this whole question, so now I'm just gonna let it fly let it fly. So we'll see. This is gonna be interesting. Authentic. Vulnerability. Uh what is a moment in our relationship that you felt undeniably loved? Uh oh, go. Mm. This is going to be interesting. See, it that's why I didn't. Our relationship? Yes, I guess so. They said hour. Uh, hour. And you hour. could. Let's you couples. Could, okay, so. Uh, Undeniably loved. And I can work with this. I can work with this. Um, simply because there's various forms of, of love. Sure. Yeah. Of, of uh, course, of course. Uh, we got to specify that. Don't be scared. <laughs> so, if, if, we, if we go Greek, you know, uh, I think the, the love that typifies our current relationship is Phileo. Which is a friendship love, and I think it's, you know, coming here week after week, um, sitting down with you, 
having an open, honest conversation, cult- having an open and honest conversation, you know, cultivating and developing our relationship, your favorable response to the food that I cook. <laughs> <laughs> and any constructive and any constructive criticism you may have. So just just the time that I've spent here with you That's mm-hmm. right. has been to me a, a great example of that friendship, brotherly love. That's right. Cool. Your turn. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Doom 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 doom. What it do? When's the last time you felt lucky to be you? Every motherfucking day. You better tell somebody. I'm not sure what the <laughs> heck just happened there. This guy's jar is getting full already. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the bucket is getting the full buckets, already. You Yo, take, really? That's not the, taking on water. Right, right. <laughs> that's not the only thing getting full up in here. Now, what what do you got? In, what what do you have in there, man? What my, is what's that? in that glass, bro? My, what's my in that bad, glass? Bad, what's bad. in that glass? This thing done went um, all the way. What, to the so left. let me let me tell you what's in the glass, right? Um, so what's in the glass is my man, Best Vineyards, who has an artisan distillery and winery in Elizabeth, Indiana. And so I got some caramel liquor with some vodka that they made and some cherries. And I ain't had that much of it. So but it's, it's pretty dope. But um, you said what was that question? <clears throat> When's the last time you felt lucky to be you? I mean, truthfully, every day I love being me, man. Like there's not a day that I don't wake up. I, I can't imagine ever wanting to. Not be me, like let that breathe, like dude, like I love me. I'm a, I'm, I got an ego. I love me. That's you know right. what I mean. I love me so much, even on my worst days, I love me. That's right. Um, there it is. Come on, Come I, on I wake it. up and say thank God. Like you know, it's been it's been a hellish two weeks. Actually, hell, it's been hell for a lot of people for a really long time. But these last two weeks for me have been really really unique in the sense that, um. It's just crazy, not without getting into the details of it, COVID. You you suck. Um, but I wake up every morning like, okay, if you wasn't Gil, you couldn't do what you're about to do next. That's right. True that. Right? So I man, bro, I don't even feel lucky. I feel blessed that God made me the way I am. That's every right. Every introduction to every challenge, every ass whooping, every ch- child right. abuse, whatever. Every element that I've ever gone through, the chaos that I have existed in has made me who I am. I love that. On that. All right, my question. Hold on. You know, uh, 50 Cent said the moment you decide to offer the world uh, who you really are, you offer the world something that no one else can offer it. Damn, damn. Do that. Say that again. Let, let him hear that. He said the moment you decide to be you, you offer the world something that no one else can offer it. There it is. And yep. 50 said it, but that's training. Let's go. That's training. Th- that's that's training. Right. Let's yes, go. Sir. So yeah, man, I love me, and I, I hope I hope our listeners like if if you sitting at home, COVID no COVID nineteen right, and you questioning who you are, I, I really I hope our listeners take a moment to really take a step back and love yourself. That's right. Like yes. truly look at who you are and all the great attributes that you have. Take all the challenges that you've been faced with and see the greater benefit of it That's because right. you are amazing. Like I don't, there's, I don't believe there's not an amazing person. The craziest, weirdest person you know is amazing. That's and, right. And right? everybody's got an amazing story. That's Absolutely, right. Absolutely. 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 Definitely. Yeah. For real. And it's time. And I think it's time that as brothers, you know, my white brothers out there, we love you. But as brothers sitting at the table, we have to tell our story because our story, I think, is more unique than anybody else's story on the face of the. This earth, I'm going to own that. The face of this earth, definitely here in the United States. But, you know, let, let me let me run to this next question. I, man, playing with me, talking about who I, and do I feel lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Demond. Oh, man. <laughs> have I ever challenged your worldview and how so? Yes, you have. Um, you have, and again, this is something that's been happening in the last, actually the, the COVID thing is actually come at a very opportune time for me because we started talking about, again, the, I know this is, I'm going to talk about the podcast all the time. Too bad. Um, let's go. <laughs> um, you know, me getting started with this thing and you were having me, we, you were having me look at it from in business aspect, you having me look at it from a different angle. Um, and you've had me look at myself at, from different angles as well, like what I am capable of. And you've helped me catch language that 
I had that I have used that didn't benefit me. That's right. Okay. So, um, and I'm st- and still, it's a work in progress. I'm still working on it. But every time I talk to you, I learn something. You know what I mean? So, right. what was the question again? Uh, um, <laughs> I babble have I, a lot. Have I changed your worldview and how so? You ain't babbling, brother. Speak yes. On. Um. It, it just it's it's it it is it is bigger. It, if I it, if I we had met if we had met when I was younger, they're they're, they're definitely I definitely be in a different place now. But I'm not going to regret that because I'm here now and I've had all the experiences I have, I've had to lead me to this point so I can go forward to do whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's Everything right. has a season and a reason. That's we right. In it. So True there that. it is. My yeah. turn? Is it nah, my turn? His turn. His oh, turn. Oh, okay. We're going to let. Uh, train here. Okay. Now it's your turn. <laughs> let, that, let that breathe. <laughs> What's a feeling you're uncomfortable sharing with me? Mm. Mm. Man, because you ain't sharing it just with him. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> um, or the rest of the world. That was kind of gross. Okay, so full full transparency. Let's go. Um, can you ask the question again? Just to make sure I'm on the right track. No, it's fine. Uh, what What's a feeling you're uncomfortable sharing with me? I'll say, I don't know if it's, I guess it's part a feeling and a thought of um, something that worries me often is not um, becoming who I was meant to be. Mm. It it worries me sometimes. Um, it's, a, it's a real feeling that uh, sometimes, you know, I can uh, uh, get a little too consumed at. Uh, usually when I have idle time, thank God for love and so. Uh, but uh, usually when I have idle time, that can creep into my mind and just cause me to feel away. But um, I can typically, um, what I'll do is grab a book, some kind of self-development book, and I can read a chapter or so and get right out of it. But um, that's something I'm uncomfortable sharing with anybody. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Who you meant to be? Great. Greatness. Greatness. What does greatness look like to you? Greatness Damn. looks like to me, uh, again, we talked about this last week. Yes, sir. Uh, becoming the best version of you, right? Uh, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. Um, and then in that context, being able to help someone else achieve the same thing. There it is. There it is. Cool. Greatness. Well, here, real quick, little little ad. You know, just those of y'all, bop, biggity, bop, bop, bop. You know, those of y'all who are tuning into the Facebook, welcome to Common Conversations. So, if you're watching us live, this is where we actually record our podcast. Uh, we try to go live and share with y'all um, all the bloopers, all the in betweens, and of course, we're gonna edit and chop it down, uh, minus all the cuss words. Uh, so, right now, what we're playing is I, we we stole these cards um, from Amazon. And uh, <laughs> we're doing the red tabletop cards level two, where we're all going around and asking ourselves um, authentic, revealing questions because we feel like black men should be definitely sharing more of their lives with each other um, so that we can build each other up in the direction of being who we should be. Um, and if you talk, if you go back to last week's podcast, when we when we when we publish it, you'll hear us talk about the different dynamics that we go through as black men. Right. And what those relationships are. So, all right, who's ch- is, is trainer's turn and to, to ask the question? Let's go. Okay. So, my question is for Miguel. Um, <clears throat> what's the hardest truth you had to face this past year? Damn. What is the hardest truth I had to face? I've done some things. You know, I've I've made decisions that didn't that that didn't work out the way I expected them to. Um, there were some things that I should have done that I didn't. Um, and I underestimated my ability. And, and that was, that was a hard one. So yeah, man, that's, that's, that's what I, unless y'all want to, yeah, I'll unpack that. Yeah. 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 Okay. I have to underestimated your ability. I guess it's, it's interesting that you say that. And I guess because from an outside perspective, we see you as being so capable. Yeah, that's right. We, you have modeled capability for us in, in a variety of areas. So when you say, make that statement, I, it, it's kind of looking like, huh? Like, damn, what what got Miguel shook up that he didn't feel <laughs> capable? Did he <laughs> you just know? say you loved yourself? Uh, my, my uh, I mean, proudly loved himself. I was <laughs> like, like, man. Well, I mean, just because, so here's the thing. Like, I, I totally believe in myself and the ability to figure out anything. That's right. You know, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not all knowing. 
and 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 one of my mantras is in order for you to know what you don't know you have to learn what you don't know right you got to do what you have never done before and i'm constantly putting myself in a positions where i'm facing things that i'm not sure about and 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 they're unknowns um and and when you're doing things that are unknown um there's a couple things that happen one you know you've got to make a decision right and sometimes you don't have I don't personally necessarily have someone I can call who's done a thing before to kind of guide me through it. So which means I've got to take on all the research that I've put together and then make a decision and own that regardless of the outcome. That's right. Right. And so then the education is hindsight because once it's done, you're like, oh, snap. Why didn't I see that? OK, why didn't I know this was going to happen? OK, I, I didn't account for this. Um, and so I, I've run into that often. You know, I called a buddy of mine the other day. So right now, so I'm I'm trying to source stuff from China, basically PPEs for for folks for business, right? Because the business is for the most part kind of closed. And um, and in a normal world, I had this conversation. In a normal world, I wouldn't be concerned. In a normal space, if somebody was like, "Yo, Gail, we want some cool, dope, custom made hats," you know, we're gonna source them. This is what we want to do. I I would just we put the project together. You know, I would connect them with the factory. Of course, they never know what the factory is. I, I'd make the connection. The product would deliver over about ninety days, hundred twenty days, whatever it is, and we'd be good to go. But in this season, man, it's it's so chaotic. Things are so different. You know, um, shipping. We're having shipping challenges. Like every country is affected by it. Um, you know, people who would be clients yesterday are not clients today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in a whole new product that I'm not, I'm not necessarily familiar with, even though, even though I'm familiar with my broker, I'm not familiar with where it's coming from, you know, the constant changes in federal government, et cetera, et cetera. So the point is, is that I'm constantly learning new things. And then that it, it does, it breeds sometimes, um, if I can be honest, doubt, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I and as a and, and as a kid who was raised in in, in some degree of child abuse, um, I already have that. I already have the feeling sometimes that I'm not good enough, right? And and so that there there I'm plagued. Entrepreneurs as a whole go through a whole different type of mentality and stress level. And a lot of entrepreneur and artists always feel like what they do is not good enough. So when you when you feel like what. Sometimes when I feel like when I'm I'm working on something and I'm driving and I'm driving it and I'm not getting results, I get sucked back into this. I ain't good enough. I don't know enough. I can't figure this out. This is this is this is bullshit. I quit. I want to do it. I'm out. Right. But then the question you asked me earlier, like I always love me, bro. Like I could wake up in the morning. Tia will tell you, you know, I'm I'm butt hurt for about 10 seconds. And then a half hour later, I'm like, you know, train there. Superman don't show up without his cape. I got my cape on. Like, let's figure it the fuck out. Let's go. Because if anybody can do it, you can. I need you to say my. We, we, I need you to say my statement right. If you're gonna be using it. Oh my bar, my bad. <laughs> how, how would he use that, man? Go Superman on. don't go nowhere without his cape. Super wear don't. Super wear. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Superman, Superman doesn't man, go bro. anywhere without his cape. No, don't go nowhere. You can't. Don't, you can't don't go my nowhere. I'm mess it I, up. I, I can't. I can't do the double negative. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but what, English major. What's I, I, what's not? I just can't do it. What man. that is called, Miguel, is called being a trailblazer. That's right. See, you was the one that was went to, meant to go over the hill first, and you know, get hit with all the arrows and then come back and tell us, oh, it's a lot of them over. They oh, shoot. They <laughs> shoot. They shoot. <laughs> they shoot. They shoot. I'll be your spotter. Let's go. That's you right. know, I mean, I, yeah. Hey, every every good sniper need a spotter. Oh, uh, just so you know, Tia's like, the good question is, is, uh, is it hard being you? Ooh, is it, is it being, is, baby, for those of y'all who are listening and don't know who Tia is, Tia is my wife, and uh, she's watching us on um, Facebook. The question, babe, though, really, is it hard being married to me? Ooh. You know, that's I believe the you question. would say, let that breathe. Um, but I, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let but that I, breathe. Let that breathe. I will say, yes, sometimes I. I, I believe it's hard to be me. Um, abs- absolutely. It is hard sometimes to exist in my own skin. Um, do I ever want to leave it? Absolutely not. Um, but do I wake up sometimes and look in the mirror and say, man, boy, how you going to do this? Wh- what have you done? What have you gotten <laughs> yourself into? What what idea did you think of? I was talking, Tia, Tia said something to me today. We were in the kitchen just having a conversation, and um, I have a tendency to write on the walls. Um, so everywhere I go, I got to have paper or something so I can just, I have an idea in a moment. It got to come out. Yep. 
And so all of a sudden, I, I just start scribbling stuff on the wall. Like, okay, if I connect this dot, I could do this. If we do this, we could do this. If we source this, we can come from here. Okay, here's the value in doing this. This is the rate of return, blah, 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 blah. And I'll scribble this shit out on the wall. And it's funny because she said to me, she said, I may not understand. It took her years to understand this. I may not understand what you what you scribbling on the wall, but I get you. You know, that's a may, you know, for me, yo, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, it's hard being me sometimes, but I got oh, a dope she said ass It's wife. not hard being married to you. Scary sometimes, but not hard. <laughs> there it is. Scary, there you but go. Not hard. Let that breathe. You no, know, so uh, good. That means Chris is not on this, so she won't ask it. <laughs> <laughs> True story. So, all right, my question, my question. This is a group question. We got the red card. Bing! This is the wild card. Mm. Ask me something you think is off limits. And this is all players. I think we did this, but somebody else. So the question is, who want to start? Uh, all right, Trey is going to start. So the question is, ask me something you think is off limits. This is a setup. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've talked about it before, but, um, you know, maybe the listeners um, haven't heard the other side of it. Of course, I have privately. Um, but um, you mentioned on one of the episodes that you never wanted to be married. True story. And you're married. True story. And so talk about what was the shift in the mindset to say, oh, no, I got to marry this girl. So I think you have to understand why I never wanted to be married first. So uh, prior, prior to being married, I have – Little to no examples of a good marriage. Okay. Then I have little to no examples of a good black marriage. Um, I came from, so my father left us when we were little, um, left my mother for the babysitter. Um, and then my mother remarried some years later to a gentleman who was extremely physically abusive. And then later sent us back to my father who is, is also ex equally religious. Um, so one is seventh day Adventist. The other one is Amy. And then, uh, my, my father was psychically and kind of emotionally abusive. Um, and then my mother, re and then, and then series later, my mother remarried again, third time. Um, he happened to be gay. Um, also extremely religious. Um, so you, you've got this cycle of events and, and a lot of influences. And then I'm, I've met a lot of people along the way who have always been cheating on or wives were getting beat on. Um, children were being abused. And so in that, and even my, I think most of the people in my family have been married two to three times, sometimes four. And so, you know, in my head, you know, everybody's preaching, oh, get married, oh, get married. This thing about marriage is a beautiful thing. And in my head, I said, that's some bullshit. Like, if I can date you, why would I ever marry you, right? Like, there's there's no reason to be attached to someone like that if it creates and breathes an unhealthy environment. And so what started the change? Boom. So what starts to change is I meet this beautiful, unassuming young lady uh, at Wilberforce University. HBCU. HBCU, let's go. And um, her name happened to be Tia. And we dated for about, what, good three, four, five years. And um, when I started to unpack the cycle of abuse in my life, started with her. Totally. And, and I can't, she tells a story better than I can. Um, but I, I re, there was a moment where I was in her dorm, right? And we were, I don't even remember the conversation. But all of a sudden I started, break, I, I just broke down, probably 19, 20 something year old dude who starts talking about his father. And I just start boohooing and crying. And, and I, I'm unpacking this, this story that I didn't even know was in me. Wow. Right. Um, and she's absorbing it. And, you know, most women would be like, yo, what the hell is this? I'm out. Yep. But she stayed. That's right. Um, another thing happened where she saw me at my, I, I have a temper, um, but I've also can be provoked to fight. And I've always fight and, and, and most of my life. Um, but she saw me at my worst one time in, in the middle of a fight. And, you know, after the, the, the aftermath was not healthy for anybody, um, and when it was over, you know, she had no judgment. I'm I mean, maybe wow. she did and she never said it to me. Wow. Right. But there was no judgment. Wow. Um, and she was like, I understand the circumstances. You did what you had to do to survive. Let's go. And she stayed. Wow. You know, um, and so, you know, 
when when you go through something like that, there was there was a moment after that we were we were um I lived off campus. We were you know we were tra- transitioning a life, and I remember I was walking through the mall with my little brother Charles. He probably out there somewhere driving truck. Um, and I said, "Yo, I think I'm gonna ask her to marry me." And he looked at me funny like, "Huh?" <laughs> and I said, "You know." I don't want to, if I'm going to be with somebody for the rest of my life, I won't want to be with anybody else. So let's do it. Right. Because at that point, marriage no longer was this religious thing. Cause I had to remove religion from my life. Um, it was no longer a Christian thing. It was, it marriage was about a union with me and her building an empire. That's right. Right. That's right. And that's what I saw her as. I saw her as my equal, someone who could help me take my world and bring it to life. Right. Because she had already been doing it. Right. right? And we didn't even know she was doing it. This right. is even before she became a therapist. That's how you know she a dope ass therapist. If you give her the time, boy, she'll unpack the world. That's so, right. I mean, that's I mean, I know that's a long answer. Um, but I think you got to go back to a little bit of the beginning, a little bit to the middle. Yep. Um, and, and I'll tell you, even after marriage, marriage ain't easy. Right, for you sure. You know, it's just been crazy sometimes. For and sure. And then some things would be good. But I'll tell you, I and I tell her this all the time, I'd never do this shit again. Well. Never, ever would I marry again. Right. So if we didn't work, we was going to work. But you're going to work. We're going to work. That's right? right. There was, but see, and there was no, no, there was never a doubt in my mind. I never came out of it. I, I, I got some homies that be like, yo, I got married. I'm going to try this. Right. Nigga, this ain't ice cream. Let that breathe. <laughs> you can't just try it. That's right. You know what I mean? You got to, this is, this is a, this is, man, this, this is the ultimate entrepreneur relationship. That's right. Marriage is a business. I mean, really, most people get get married in America. Why? For taxes, tax write-offs, right? It's all about economics. So when, that's why also America's divorce rate is probably high as hell. Because it's all about economics. He done done went. So. All the way. My bad, y'all. But I'll say this. Uh, That's the question. I'll say this and then we can. You know, y'all can ask y'all's questions to him. Uh, but one thing I observed early uh, coming around you two, and, of course, I knew Tia already, and, of course, I met you uh, years later, years later. But um, one thing I remember and I noticed right off the bat is that she will never let you miss an opportunity to be great. True story. And I saw that early. True story. And so kudos, man. Never miss an opportunity it. for you to be great. Yeah, whenever there was an oppor- opportunity that presented itself, and and I don't know if he just um, maybe didn't see it coming or whatever, she did, and she would push him to the forefront. Hey, Miguel, this is it right here. And I peeped that early on, and so I was like, wow, she is not going to let him miss that opportunity. And yeah. I love that about him, you know, uh, their story, their marriage. And uh, I thought it was interesting. It takes time to develop that, though, T. Yeah, one hundred percent. We weren't we weren't always like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I think that, you know, there were there were periods. It's funny I tell this story because you know I'm also married to Nikki, um, who is my <laughs> sister in law, and I you know early on there was a period of time where people knew Nikki didn't know Tia. Right. Right. And right. They right, thought right. Nikki was my wife, and Tia was the sister in law. Um. <laughs> And sometimes, because we, I would go on business trips, or she would be somewhere else, and and Nikki would be that support arm. Um, and the point I'm making, and, and that goes back to what Trainier said, she didn't say no, stop, don't do it. She's like, take my sister, right? So I think you're spot on, but it, it does take time, and I've had to do the same thing to her. But we've had to learn each other. One hundred percent. You know, we we've had to we've had to see we've had to see the greatness. Facts. And be able to receive what our greatness is. Like I can see all the potential in the world in that woman, but if she don't want to do it, I can't make her. That's right. Right. And then when she's ready to do what she wants to do, my job at that point is to make sure that it happens. That's right. That's it. And she and she does the same. Hell yeah. Teach, all day. teach bro. Gotta teach. have that. I like Gotta it. Gotta have that. So mm, I just right. like that. I like that. Y'all's questions. Go ahead, man. What can you say after that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I. I I've known you for like 10 years now, um, and I, I can't think of anything that I've ever asked you that you've never been willing to answer. So I, the, uh, I can't say I have a question, because right. any question I've ever come to you with, you've answered. Let's go. Thanks. Um, anything I've, I've ever asked about marriage, uh, business, friendship, relationship, religion, what, whatever the case may be. That's right. You have always been willing to have the conversation. 
regardless of whether we agree with each other or not. And I think sometimes you like playing devil's advocates because it spurs the conversation along. That's right. You challenge me to look at things from a different perspective, from a different vantage point, by simply offering the vantage point, by willing to take the question that I may ask you and take the question to the next level, by asking me a different question that prompts me to think differently. So I don't know that I have a question that I'm a, that I would ask you that you would that I think you would be afraid to answer because that's just that's not the Miguel I know. There mm. it is. I appreciate mm. that. Let's go. See, he be challenging me because when y'all ask me questions, I had to think about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what up, dude? You asking or we rotating? Uh, it's probably gonna be rotating because I think I caught you at a like we've known each other for you know almost ten years as well uh, through our wives, and we've become close over the last year or so and i think i hit you at a point where you were also extremely you you hit a uh, point in your life where you're extremely open and you and vulnerable so you don't care you know what you, you you own what's gone what's gone on or whatever you're thinking about so you just say whatever's on your mind so um i haven't had any there's not anything i would ask because you either have told me already or will tell me when it's necessary. So, um, yeah, I was like, what? There's nothing. I, and I'll, I'll ask anybody anything. I don't care. What The worst thing you're going to do is get mad at me and beat me up. So as long as you don't kill me, I'm good. Maybe. The, 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 so the, I'm not afraid wrestler, of any questions. Right. The, the wrestler is like, you're going to beat me yeah, up. Yeah. 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 Uh, Maybe. Hit the most diesel guy in the room. Let's yeah. go. Cut it out, man. Yeah. <laughs> he got cowbells. I mean, um, curl bell. What is that thing again? Oh, my gosh. Kettlebell. Kettlebells. He Thank you. Kettlebell. Thank you, Damon. This guy. <laughs> in the, the garage. Not the kind you make popcorn with. Like, let's go. Wow. <laughs> All right, D, your question. Go, All man. All right. Just uh, put it in your hand. Uh, I don't know. Mm-mm. I don't know. Pick one. Mm-mm. 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 Well, while y'all digging it up, welcome to the podcast. If you're watching us on Facebook, we love you. Reporting yes. live. Yes, yes, we do. Wild card question. So this is for everybody. Sing your favorite song lyrics you can think of off the top of your head. Okay. I'll do it. This, so, is, this is one of my favorites. Right. Let me say this. I like every little thing you do, the way you comb your hair. <laughs> every little thing you do that shows how much you care. Hey, baby. <laughs> and I like it. And I like it. Y'all remember that song? Man. Man. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> wow. I ain't mad at it. Yet another example of trainering. You dig? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, I'm just playing along. We, hey, authentic. Trey, 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 Nearing. Damn it, um, you'll go. When you asked the question, the first song that came to my mind was, I found out what I've been missing always on the run. I've been looking for someone. Now you're here like you've been before, and you know just what I need. It took some time for me to see. All right, there it is. He came through. Who, he? Who's the artist? Whitney Houston. Keep it that way. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you fell for that. Wow. I did. Like, Walk well, right into that one. Just, just, just like. I didn't even walk. I jumped into that. Boy, you just. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing. So. Crash and burn. Hey, listen. Woo. Hey, listen. Young dunk, sir. I asked the question. <laughs> I asked the question. It's I mean, your turn. Oh, damn. Know. So, okay. Um, this is going to be interesting. I can't, I can't sing. So. Miguel. 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 Miguel, Miguel, Miguel. All right. Miguel. Um, what, what's what's my favorite my favorite song? All right. So the song goes like this, right? I, I don't remember. It's, it's by Jim Croce. Um, I think that's how you say his name, but it's it's um he sings like "Don't pull on Superman's cape, don't speed in the wind, oh, don't laugh yeah, at the Loft Long Ranger, and, and you don't, don't mess, mess around, around with Jim." Do 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 do. I can't sing, but I love that song. Matter of fact, it's it's on every device that I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it's Jim Croce, but y'all go look up that song. It's bad, bad, mean, 
Bad, bad Leroy Brown. Yeah, or, or that something, joint, like that. something like that. Baddest man in the whole damn town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Ain't that's, it in a junkyard dog. Yeah, that's that's my joint. You I don't can, pull on you know. Superman's cape. You don't you don't spit in the, in the wind. wind. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's I did it. that once. I spit in the wind. That's so bad. Yeah. Man, you want something bad, man? <laughs> Try fry bacon naked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hold on. It's said what? fried bacon naked. And bruh, <laughs> why did I? Hold I'm gonna so no. need you to stay out the kitchen. Uh, hold on, no. hey, hold you, got, on. you got to know some foundational yeah. basics. Hold I on. like living dangerously. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. Man. Obviously. Some shit is not supposed I heard the praise. I heard the praise before. I'm like, let me give this a try. I'm the only one that lives here. Yeah, now I know why. <laughs> Hmm. Bruh. Oh, Learn yeah. some things. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, wow. Got some sense of experience. Experience is the best teacher. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want to hear what I experienced. Yeah. Woo. Pigs in a blanket. <laughs> hey. Deep fried edition. That caught, <laughs> hey, that caught me off guard so bad. Uh, it didn't even bruh. register right away. And then I like got, it took I, a I second. Like, I was like, what? <laughs> like, then glorious. Did, did, I, right. did, did I hear what I just thought I heard? Oh, man. man. Snap, crackle, pop. Oh, oh my God. No. All right, who's next up on the bat with the question? Who got three? Uh, who got one? Who got three? Who got two? Let's go. Damon, you up, Doc. Mm. Look, it got quiet. It's raining outside. I can right. hear the raindrops. Raindrops keep falling on my head. All right, let's go. Oh my can you stand <laughs> Man, if you don't just grab rain. it and go. Look, oh, okay, okay, look, okay. You, right. you don't see uh, this dude over here playing with the cars. He's shuffling like which one I'm going. Okay. Uh, Trainier, what's the most fun you can remember having with me recently? See wow. what it was. It took you out my suitcase. Oh, Wow, most fun I would have to say rec- and recently would be uh just this these moments here nah. since we've started the 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 uh podcast and um you know uh, I think those are the most fun so far. I I know we'll have uh, legendary moments in the future. Most uh, definitely. But uh he said legendary. Yeah, that, that 100, 100%. That. That's, that's my boy right there. Uh, yeah, yeah, well you did. So yeah, I told y'all I'm clutch. <laughs> Superman don't go nowhere without his tape now. I done told y'all now. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but yeah, so I would say this podcast, man, just kicking it with you, man. And then of course you done shut it down two weeks in a row with the with the food and so and you two know it's gonna be but I definitely look forward level. to the future. <laughs> oh. Definitely taking oh. next week to the next level. Got the whole new super so chef over you here. got two? Is it my question now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Go. I'm asking the group question. Let's okay, go. Okay, fire away. Here we go. Mm. Uh-oh. Mm. <laughs> I mean, y'all, y'all got to see this dude's face. He this is not, this is not, look. I mean, uh, is, it, is, it, is it a hard question? Is it a deep question? Can I, can I see your questions? Can you my see rec, my red question? Yeah, your red question. I just asked, we just asked mine. Mine was the sing song one. I just want to make sure I'm looking at this correctly. Mine said you. Okay. Off limits. So how does that read to you? Sing your favorite, sing your favorite song lyrics. What's the both players at? Uh, Usually, if it's two people. Okay. I, so it's four of us. Yes, I'm on the right page. So yeah. all players. Uh, yeah, yeah. All okay. players. Yes. You ready? Here we go. Let's go. Play on, player. <laughs> <laughs> I put my personal business in the street. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just so y'all know, you know, he is the only bachelor at the table. Yes, I was actually quoting the song with "Thank You." Yes, I know. I'm just <laughs> way to tell on yourself. Hey, listen. <laughs> uh, finish this sentence. Thank you for. What am I saying this to? You just saying thank you for. It says you got to finish the sentence. So what would you say? Thank you for. Thank you for bringing me to the table with three lovely, energetic, fun black men who are willing to talk about their lives so that we may engage in a better life for ourselves and our children and our families. Let's go. Bless me again and again. And I'm thankful for all having a microphone and people to listen. That's right. <laughs> How is this going to take everybody's answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's why you don't let him talk first. Hey, 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 I'm telling everybody's you, answer. You give, me, you give me dead air and I'm going. So That's right. <laughs> Next, go. Move. 
<laughs> All right then. Um, I am grateful for the no, air no, that no. I breathe. Thank you for. Thank you for. I'm sorry. Thank you for the air that I breathe. Thank you for uh, opportunities uh, and the time to take advantage of them. Uh, nice. this, this is uncertain. This is uncertain times for people. Nice. And the whole most of this time, uh, I ask my wife. I freak out every morning, like literally every morning. I'm I'm an anxiety enraged, nerve shot mess. However, there are, I know that there are, say again? Nevertheless. Nevertheless, I know that there are opportunities. I just got to go find them and then try to take advantage of them, which I've done to some, some, to more or less. I heard the message in that. And so the one thing that I think about when you say that is, um, you know, the challenges, the ups and, and, and the downs, you know, they're not meant to destroy you. They're meant to develop you. Right. Absolutely. So always keep that in your forethought, brother. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Message. Thank you for. Thank you for the incalculable number of decisions, events, circumstances that have brought the four of us together. One hundred percent. Cool. Thank you uh, for my wife, Angel, who, when I was laid up in the hospital, didn't know if I was going to make it, live, breathe, walk again. Damn. For her, um, just for the love she's shown. Her presence, her sacrifice, her being there. That's right. Uh, and just thank you for being here in this moment. It's We have challenges that are before us. We have doors of opportunity that are open and then those that are yet to be open. And we have an exceptional guide. That's right. A mentor, a trailblazer. That's right. We have... Uh, you always need wingmen. That's right. And then you always need somebody who's able to bring up the rear. And I think we have all of that sitting at this table. And I'm very thankful and grateful for it, as well as the loves that you all have in your lives that enable you to be right here. That's right. Thank you, Krista. So what you saying is, <laughs> so what you saying is, uh, yes, sir. Well, that you are the shack of the group. Shaquille O'Neal. I, I don't know. I don't know. Miguel is the LeBron James of the group. Uh huh. Okay. Right. All right. I can work with this. Okay. Trainer is the Reggie Miller of the group. Let's go. Mm. Okay. Right. I can see that. And Damon is. You better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he was gonna go with Spud. I was wondering if he was like, "If you go with Spud Webb, we are we are no we we, we gonna have some problems. <laughs> we gonna fight in the parking lot. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, we we gonna fight before you get out there. Hey, let that brother be. Let that brother be Isaiah. He was, but he but he he said you called us both wing men, so we gotta have somebody on the wing. And yes, on the wing, when I think about, I think about Paul Pierce. Okay, he yeah. was the he yeah. was the truth. Okay, yeah. So okay, yeah. Right on. Yes, sir. That went way better than I was expecting. Hey, I got your back, brother. Remember, you thought of trainer, and I ain't gonna do you bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, there's. It's funny. Like we've all mentioned the opportunity and like us being here before we get to trainer's answer. Uh, somebody asked me one time, it's like, you know, little kid, like I've got real little ones, and it's like this is the best time because they still believe in magic. I'm like, I still believe in magic. They're like, the magic doesn't. It's like, oh, really? I'll prove it. You ready? Do you know how minuscule? of a uh, percentage for you to make all decisions that you've made. Every single decision that you've made from whenever you started making them to get to this point right here, right now, that we're all sitting here in this at this table. If that's not magic, I don't know what is. That's right. That's right. So. That's right. There it is. So. Mr. Trainier. So I would just say thank you for um, – the opportunity to learn and grow and develop and, and, and push. Cause it's all, it's, it's all a decision to push towards being that better version of yourself. You know, it's all a decision. You know, you can wake up one morning and just say from this day forth, I'm not looking back. I'm going forward. This is what I'm going to do. And I ain't taking no shorts. And so I'm thankful for that opportunity. I'm thankful for, uh, getting uh, some coaching. You know, we all need coaches mm -hmm. in our life. Um, yes, you know, I had a football coach for many years. I had a track coach for many years. We had teachers for many years. Funny how we go through life and don't have a life coach. Mm. 
And so I'm thankful for the coaching that I have received Let that breathe. over the years, um, <laughs> mainly the last um, eight years. I, I, I thank those individuals. They know who they are. Of course, Miguel is one of them. Uh, I'm learning from these brothers, but I am just thankful for having coaches. There it is. There it is. Right on. Oh, man, cool. I'm a little nervous to hear what these last questions are going to be, man. I got one left. Who, I mean, who, what you got? I got one. I got one. I got one, and then two. what's your word? All right. Damon, you got two, so you you lead the way. You got two left? He got two. He been sitting over there quiet. So yeah. those of y'all who are listening, this is Common Conversations, and we are playing the Red Table Talk card show so welcome in this is a new show having a little fun damon your question let's go uh i'm gonna ask this one of miguel you've shown me blank about myself fill in the blank you've shown me blank about myself that's an excellent question man um Man, you know, you you shown. I'm trying to think of how I, how I say this. Make it plain, Doc. Um, man, you, all right, you you, you you've shown never. me that I'm that you show me that I'm greater than I am um, when I'm doubting myself. Wow. And I'll just leave it at that. We've had some awesome conversations, um, and sometimes I have to recall. You do a really good job of recalling shit I've said, and and I don't remember I said it. <laughs> but I mean, you you do you you challenge me, and 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 sometimes the way I think, the way I process, the way I remember things, the way I want to put things together, and I, I remember some of our conversations, and like when I'm saying, man, this is not possible, and I'm not sure I can pull this off. You know what? I remember this conversation we had, and boom, there it is. So, yes, sir. Go ahead. You got the last car. Go ahead and run the last car. We'll go around. Was it me? Or yeah, you, uh, yeah he, nah, he had two, so we just gonna let oh, him keep, go ahead, go ahead. We just gonna let him keep firing. I don't know if this one really works. Fire away. It says, draw your favorite memory with me. Both players compare. Ah, it's it's too early for that. We ain't we ain't made love yet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> this guy is wild. <laughs> Tia, Tia, please, when he gets home tonight, I need you to work with this brother. <laughs> so who's in the front? I don't know. I think we lost some. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know I don't know you, Krista, very much. I know I don't know you well. But when this brother come home, too, I was so much I'm going to need you to work with him also. I was so much He's going to bring you some some ramen home. I, I made enough for, for both of y'all. I'll be so grounded. I'll be, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a. Yeah, you cutting up this guy here, boy. Hey, both of them. It's rubbing off. Yeah. It's hump day. Let's go. Hump day. My, 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 my. <laughs> Go ahead, Trainier. No, you know we're gonna leave Trainier for last. Uh, Dean, uh, your, your turn. We're we right, gonna let him. We're gonna let him. Uh, okay, so it depends on. Well, I don't know who I, have I asked him. Who haven't I asked anything to? Uh, whoever you want, make it. Let's go. Flip a coin. You know what? I, I don't think I've actually actually I've, I haven't asked you a question, so it'll be for you. So I'm going to go ahead and wait and mark this, and I'll see you in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, Krista said, I got you, Devon. She said okay. it's about cupcakes and lingerie. <laughs> Yikes. What is Yay that? me. What is happening here? Yay <laughs> me. <laughs> what is happening uh, here? Yay. I'm going to need you not to do that no more. <laughs> Well, got, did it get hot in here? It no, did answer the question or ask the question. Something. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, a perfect day together would be, Miguel. A perfect day together. You and me? Yeah. To- all right. So we're going to go to Comic Con first. No. First of, oh, first of all. Hell we, yeah. We, oh, we, man. First of all, we call in Damon so that we can have the bomb diggity ass breakfast at about 930-ish. That way I we could be covered. at Comic Con by about eleven ish. Yes, we can hang out at Comic Con for a minute. Then I'm gonna take you on a photo shoot because we're gonna find a couple of people who like to do cosplay, and then we're gonna do an editorial shoot with yes. people in cosplay. I'm so excited! That's awesome. And then I'm then we going to we going to an outfit door gun range, okay. so that we can we can shoot a couple of big um, bazookas. And blow some ish up. Yes, sir. Um, I'm okay with that. And then we're gonna go get the fam and the rest of the people. We're going we're gonna to set somebody's yard on fire. Whoa, this is getting odd. Well, that, was, that, was, that, took, a, that took a left <laughs> turn. We're going to set somebody's yard on fire. That's what I call a bonfire. Okay. Right? We're going to set somebody's yard on fire. We'll grab some s'mores. Whether you drink or you smoke um, or you don't do neither, you're going to come. We're going we're gonna to close the night out um, with a bang. 
And yo, that's that's it right there. Thank Boom. you for the clarity. Absolutely. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> yes, it was starting to you know, uh, yeah, I'm, get I'm, a little I'm unibomber out I got out that here. breakfast thing going because that means I'm going to be at Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean? It, you know, this Man, is, this what? Is, this is group outings. It, Are you kidding it, me? It was, starting to, <laughs> it was starting to feel a little unibomber Hey, you know, you know, <laughs> I did used to set stuff on fire as a kid, but then we won't go there. You're just going to tell all your business. Just right. tell all your business. Hey, you know, it ain't just, a story if you don't tell it. All right, you got another question? Oh, that's on me. Okay, finish this sentence. Um, Damon. Finish this sentence. Finish this sentence. When I am hurt, I. Hmm. <clears throat> Cook. All right. Wow. All right. Really? Um, it's kind of too far. I do one of two things. I either cook or I write. Uh, I think some of my, my best creations, food-wise, have come out of some of my deepest pain. There it is. Wow. The wow. man the man is a poet with food. Mm. And um some of the culinary poet, if you will. I like that. Call it culinary again, Damon, the culinary poet. That's right. I might have to brand that one. We got to um, man, some, some of the, need a glossary. Some of the, the best things I've ever written have come out of my uh, deepest pain as well. All right. It's my greatest loss. Mm. All right. Mm. Let's go. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. T, Last close question. out the red table talk. Last question. Doo -doo. I'm going to ask it to everybody. Let's I know go. we did the... Ah, do what you want. But I'm going to ask this one to everybody. Okay. What's something we should celebrate together? Ooh. What's, who want to who wanna take the lead on that? Go. Oh, you mean unplugging? Oh, they talking about unplugging in life. <laughs> something we should all celebrate together? Yeah, what's something we should celebrate together? Life. Our 10 year anniversary. Mm. <laughs> A ten okay. year anniversary. I say life. Of, of, of common conversations. I'll say it. A 10 year okay. anniversary. That's you know how much money we'll be making by that point? Yeah, dude. Because we're all going to have our own things by that point as well. You know what I mean? Like, this is just the start of something. You know, we just got started. This is only what, episode five, right? We're still on one hand. We haven't even got to Michael Jordan rings yet. We ain't even published these yet. <laughs> That's a good point too. Right. <laughs> got you. All right. So I like that. Ten like year that. That's that's that big goal right there. You dig? I, I say life. My man I, said life. I have a feeling that this is just this is just the start of something that we're gonna look up 10, 15, 20 years from now. And we'll still be actively involved in each other's life. We'll still be a part of this. We'll still be having these conversations. That's right. So, right. And, and it's just wanting to be alive. I think there's a difference between being alive and living, between thriving and surviving. So just, you know, life. Oh, right. like, oh nobody outside makes bad decisions. Right. <laughs> Get chopped up in here. Right. Gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, life goal ten year. I'm I'm gonna go with you know. I think we definitely should celebrate um, our successes. Um, we should celebrate our wins um, together. And you know, and and you know, friend of mine and mentor and um, boss a long time ago. You know, used to tell me I'm really hard on myself, and she was like, "Yo, Gelly, you know, you need." To celebrate every win. That's right. When they happen. That's right. Yes, absolutely. And um, it's important to celebrate wins. And I think it's more important to celebrate wins with people you care about. That's right. You know, yes. um, because they will be there when it's bad and they can remind you that yesterday was a win. Today, we just moving forward. So, right. yeah, that's it right there. That's right. cool. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> I think that uh, something we should celebrate together are uh, the things that are important to us individually. An example would be you all uh, have families. Obviously, they're important to you. And so whenever something comes up with the family, we should celebrate that. True story. And so, you know, and, and I say that to say um, because, you know, too often, you know, we um, – you know, some maybe a birthday or, uh, you know, uh, uh, some kind of award or something. We get it. We receive it. And we just blow it off. Hi, it was nothing. 
No, it's really something. Yeah. You know, it's a, another piece to your puzzle in your story. Like, that is something that we celebrate, that we have to honor, that we have to salute, and, and we can't put it back on the back burner. Like, and so that's why I'm one of, I'm, something that I'm um, really serious about is it always giving people an encouraging word, saying something positive, saying something, um, you know, that can, you know, celebrate that person. I'm, I'm huge on that. And I don't want to miss those moments for people. And so um, all the successes, all the wins, all the family stuff, all the personal stuff to overcome the the challenges, because I, I don't believe in having bad days. I do have challenging moments, but I don't have bad days. And so, um, you know, all of those challenges, you know, when you overcome them, I just think we should celebrate those things. Let's run. I, I like no more bad days, man. I'm a, you. You need to coin that. That's a t-shirt too. Yo, if you, man, no yeah. more bad days. That's, I'm a, I'm a, that's right. I, I don't have bad days. I have challenging moments. Yeah, but I yeah. don't have bad days. I'm putting that on the wall. That's gotta be a. That's that's gotta be a note. Like you know, I told Damani the other day he need to he need to make his affirmation, putting it out there. Sorry. Um, that's fine. And put him on the and put it on some sticky notes. So when I was little. And I was going through some things, and mom, mom, when she was redefining who I was gonna be after after exploit after exploit, she used to make me write post-it notes of of what I wanted to be and how I wanted to be great and all these great things, and I would post them all over the house. That's that's gotta be my newest post right there. No more bad days. So when I wake up and look on the wall, this is there's no they're challenging days, but no more training. That's right. This this is the coach with the most is yo. He's only three hundred dollars an hour. Hit him up. That's right. Tray, 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 nearing. And if, you, and if you don't accept it now and wait an hour, it might be $400 an hour. There it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? That man said these are COVID discounts. Y'all better, y'all don't know who y'all playing with. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Shout, out, shout out to your mom, too, uh, for all the wonderful and great things that she did because uh, through all of that, you've uh, been in a position to serve us. Most us, us three and help us to grow and elevate. And so, and I know she instilled that in you. Yeah, she put yeah. that in you early. I've every story that mo well, most of the stories that you tell us about start with her. And so shout out to her. I appreciate it. Most, most she on, she was on here earlier. Yeah. My mom, mom is a beast, man. Like she's the, you know, I, sometimes I say she's the strongest, weakest person I know. Right. Cause you know, she, she's had, you know, issues and like sickness and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, shit most people couldn't go through what she's gone through and still be standing up wow. you know what i mean and Man. so you Real know talk. yeah super mom super mom shout out and, to all moms out there in the world and still doing great things yeah, still yeah. pushing toward great things yeah even like even being sick right, right. even being sick yeah. writing books all of that type she's working stuff. Uh, working oh. on her fourth book which i hope is done soon desiree get her done Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Definitely. Because we need to read that. We need everybody needs to read that story. You know, um, all our parents have great stories. One hundred percent. You know, my fathers, all of them have great stories. And I think at some point in time, it'd be good to hear their story. Our parents have great stories. You know, my mom, man, I can't wait for the fourth book to be done so that like people could can see the story. That's right. And I think it, it just adds so much value for people who are facing challenges, not so much that someone else has had a challenge, but you can see how they work through it. That's right. Um, because you can't, you know, I don't believe in comparing pain. Pain is pain, and, and we all receive it and, and, and feel it differently. That's right. But if you can show me how you work through your pain, maybe I can I can do that too. Thanks. You know, um, you know, as a guy who who's had a temper and, and still has a temper, if I can if I can tell you the things that I do to manage and control my temper, you know, maybe you can do that, too, because somebody shot, taught me, you know. So, yeah, mom's mom. Mom's taught me a lot. She's she's That's imparted right. a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge on me over the days. Again, so, that coaching. Man. Hey, man. everybody need a great parent. It ain't nothing but coaching, bro. That's it. It ain't nothing but coaching. And once you once you give them the plays, once you once you you teach them, then it's up to them to go out and do the thing. All right. But realize they always gonna need you. Right. One hundred percent. Always gonna need you. You know what I mean? And um, it's it's crazy. You know, I'm 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 gonna jump off the tracks a little bit. I know y'all gonna be mad at me, but maybe not. So no, nope. you know, most Just of the, surprised. <laughs> okay, there it is. So most of the time in life, as we're talking about mothers, right? You know, as as a as a as a man and a father. Um, 
I realize most of my life, and I think a lot of a lot of men f- deal with this. You know, when we're struggling and we're challenged, um, and we're facing things, we tend to always want our father. You know, and the cool thing about life is I always had my mom, and I could always go to my mom, even when I wanted to go to a dude or a man to help me walk through it. Wow. And I'm not saying that there wasn't one there. Because even when I would reach out to my dad, we are completely opposites. We we get along, but it don't. You know what I mean? Right. I always have my mom to be like, "Yo, this is what I'm about to do," and you know, at, at rare times would she say, "Gelly, that ain't smart." She might say, "Hey, if you gonna do that, know that you about to touch fire and just be ready." But I always could go to moms, yo. That's right. But real talk, those of y'all fathers out there, remember your kids. Most boys want their daddies first. And it's nothing to get mom. It ain't the fact that mom ain't never been there. That's right. If you a father out there, definitely <laughs> black men, you know, know that your kids wanted you first. And 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 even as a grown ass man, teach. I sometimes want my dad first. Teach. But I'm gonna tell you straight up, it's mama who I call. That's right. You know what I mean? Cause she always been there. That's one hundred. Always been there. Definitely. You know so. Man, shout out. You're right. Thank you, Trey Near. Shout out to my mother. That's shout out right. to all the great moms out there in the world. Shout do, out to my mom. Thing. Yes. Shout out. You yes. know, you know, as we, Red is a beast. Yeah, as, as I'm thinking about this, you know, the one thing that I always uh, think about with my mom is whenever I needed, whenever, she was always willing to put her stuff aside to make sure I had. Yes. Even now, like, I can call mom and say, hey, and she could say, did you eat dinner? And I'd be like, no, nah, well, come on over here real quick. I'll get you something together. Yes. Like, it's mom. You know, she's always been in that in that driver's seat, and and uh, she's never taken her hands off the steering wheel, which is interesting to Man. me. Uh, gift and a curse. But I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 ta- I'll take it that way versus the other way. Yes. Which is never having her hands on the steering wheel. Yes. Definitely, Moses. Preach. Cause then we gonna somebody gonna wreck. Yes, sir. And that's a disaster. And mom, moms don't wreck. Right, right, e- right. Even when they a wreck. Right. <laughs> hey, I, I have I have a question. Let's go. What's your word? What's my word? What's your word? Word, 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 word. So, oh, he okay. D want to say he said we flipping the script. Get back on track, Miguel. Uh, trade near no more. They're doing this. So we got these cool cards because you know the wife always got these super cards and super games laying around, and so. This card, um, what's your word? It's about my intent, right? Go to myintent.org. That's where you can check out the cards. Um, and again, it's it's just about being authentic. And and so this one is a question for all of us at the table. Um, and the first one is, what virtue do you want more of in your life? And it's a three part, so I'm going to go through it. That's the first one, right? The second one is, what is a challenge you want to overcome? And, I, and anybody's out there listening, y'all tap in. These are things you might want to ask yourself. And the third one on my on my card is, what are you passionate about and want to do more? So I'll, I'll, I'll start because mine is simple and I know them. All right. So what virtue do you want more in your life? And that's just love. Love love and, and positive, real relationships. You know, if you can bring me honesty, you can bring me tons of love. Pour it in. If you're full of shit. Stay out. You know what I mean? I want more. I want more love and, uh, and authentic authenticity, man. Come with a stamp. Yep. Um, the other piece is what challenge do you want to overcome? You know, I, sometimes I wake up and I want things to be easier. And I realize that the challenge is not so much of it being whatever it is being easier, but having the right people around you. That make complex issues simple, mm. Mm. and I, I want I want to overcome that challenge. Sometimes I don't always have the right people around me to make the complexities simple. That's right, right. And so I definitely want to overcome that because I think we on our road to the millions, um, and we need to put that in the bank. Cha-ching. That's um, right. And then the other one is, uh, what are you passionate about and want to do more of? Man, I'm I'm passionate about running my mouth. I'm passionate about photography, you know, but I I love I love I love talking to people about overcoming obstacles. I love talking about how to build capacity. 
at all levels, whether it's your personal capacity, your business capacity. I mean, I, I absolutely enjoy it. I want to do more of it. And on top of that, I want to get paid to do it. That's right. I want to get paid more to do it. Let me rephrase that because I already get paid sometimes to do it. <laughs> I right. need this to be the full time, everything else to become the hobby. That's right. That's, That's right. Go. So, um, what you what did you say a virtue was? Give me a, some more examples of virtues. Virtue is um or you smart guys in the room. You know, <laughs> <laughs> honesty, <laughs> compassion, Char- integrity, character, uh, of, a character okay. yeah. of a person. Yeah. So I think that, oh, I think I I, I think. Uh, Train here and trying to figure it out. <laughs> and that's okay yeah. because I'm not going to let this be dead air. Do you have an answer for me? Yes. You're a little, you're a little flat on that seed. Ooh, hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> from, the, from the sound guy. <laughs> you know, uh, I didn't say I could sing. But um, now, so I would say um, the integrity piece. I, I want to be around uh, more folks that are intentional about doing the right thing. Mm. Whether someone's looking or not. And and I want, you know, that same uh standard for myself. And so that would be what the virtue. Um a challenge that I'm trying to overcome still um I would just, I would probably say um, maybe thinking that I can't execute. You know, I want to be able to, I want to execute. Um, and I, and again, you know, a lot of times I can read a self development book, personal development book and, and, and really get rocking and rolling in the right direction. And so, but it's still, uh, you know, a challenge every day. You know, I tell people every day we got two people talking to us, the person that tells us we can and the person that tells us we can't. And so, um, I want to make sure that I'm listening to the person on my shoulder that tells me I can. Mm. And so, um, you know, that's important to me. And then what was the final question? Final question is, what are you passionate about and want to do more? So what I'm passionate about is, and there's a lot of things that I enjoy doing. There's a lot of things that I um, want to learn and get and be a part of. But the one thing that I'm passionate about, and I think that uh, it's super important to my life, I think I'll always be connected to it in some capacity, is coaching football and serving those those kids in our inner city. There it is. That is something that's uh I can't I can't um I'm I'm so thankful for Charles Kraft and him allowing me to come aboard, but I can't let that go. There it is. So and and granted, let's go, Coach. We're gonna get him MVP. Yes, sir. D Joe. Uh, what virtue do I want more of? Yes. <sighs> um. Look, y'all. I don't know how to answer these questions. Y'all, y'all need to be ready. I'm just saying. Let that breathe. They only gave he only gave us a half hour. I mean, I'm <laughs> I talk too much. Is that what it is? Yes, he, um, yes, he does. Yes, he does a lot. Um, I would say compassion. All right. Um, I want, I want to, I want to continuously strive to be more compassionate. I think I have a level of compassion, but sometimes it's, it's. I can honestly admit it's not where it needs to be. Um, <clears throat> what's the second part of the question? Second question is, what is a challenge you want to overcome? Um, fear. Uh, I, I think there are times, not think, and I know there are times that uh, I have a good idea, great idea, great, great plans, but something stops me from walking those plans out. And I think part of that is is fear. All right. Uh I I believe that I'm fully capable. I can sit down and I can tell other people how to make their idea bigger, brighter, and I have my own ideas. Um, so just the the fear of prob- more than likely just investing in myself enough to not just gain the knowledge but put that knowledge into action. Uh, one of the things that I'm passionate about is cooking. That's right. Uh, 
it has been my desire for years to have uh, my own restaurant, to uh, have people come in and sit down and just have a wonderful experience, to take the simplest of things and create masterfully with it because so much of our lives happen around a meal. That's right. Uh, so many significant moments in our life, emotions, uh, problem solves, even the, e- even at a governmental level, so much in this world happens around a meal. That's right. And to be able to put that meal on the table and create moments. That's right. That uh, are a lifetime because you could, a meal, something that comes back to you and it brings the whole experience back. So I'm passionate about that. Dope. I like it. I got a crazy question. Shoot. Actually, I got two questions. Go for it. 40, we'll start. 42. 42 questions? No, that's the answer. Oh, okay. Answer. <laughs> <laughs> so eating means something really unique to me. Okay. So when you when you break bread with somebody and you have a meal with them, what does that mean to you? Ooh. Ooh. Um we Gracie, the other side of Damon now. Here comes the, <laughs> here, here comes the philosopher, y'all. Let's wait go. for it. In 30 uh, seconds. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> oh, for real? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait. I, I he, he wanted that 30 I, second I answer. I wonder if he was going to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, to sit down and break bread with somebody is to in, enter into in a very intimate exchange. Um, Whether it be ideas, whether it be the meal, especially if I've prepared the meal, then it's much more intimate. Because yeah. I'm giving you a, a piece of me, a part of me. That's right. Part of my very essence, a part of my very soul. Because I, any meal I prepare, I put my heart and soul into it. That's right. And it's I've taken, delicious. Time, I've taken um, the time to consider it, consider the, the variety of flavors. What am I looking for? What am I tra- trying to translate in this meal? So mm. that each bite is a different syllable. Each bite is a different word. Mm. And the message that I'm trying to convey <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I was like, hey, wow. Look, look, like look, like look. the culinary poets coming out, man. <laughs> so yeah, y- to, y'all need to, to make sure you to sit and break, to sit and break bread with somebody is off is also um an opportunity for um walls to be let down. An opportunity to be vulnerable even if it's in the things you don't say. Got you. Your nonverbal communication. Because you could tell a lot by a person just by sitting down and, and having a meal with them. That's right how they eat it, the way they eat it, the subtle nuances, the the, the subtle sounds that they make is there. If they f- find something that they really, really enjoy, you can see it. You can create a moment. And you, it's just... Somebody told me one time that you never trust a guy that eats his fries with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> I eat my fries with a fork. <laughs> that's okay, because I still trust you. I think that's food etiquette, bro. <laughs> What's the Wait, why? You know, <laughs> you know, why? Uh-uh. You, know you drink your tea with your pinky out, too. You know. Wow. It is. Well, it's a, it's a spot of tea, and I got a tether. A tether. <laughs> I got the tether. Thank you for teaching me that word. Yes, and then yes. the meaning, the tether. Yes, thank wow. you. You're yes, yes. far wow. too kind. Wow. <laughs> so, so, what's the second question? So, the, so the, the second question is this thing about fear. Um... What are you afraid of? Like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm curious. Like you said, you know, the challenge you want to call overcome is fear. Um, but what, what are you afraid of? You know, as we have, as we talked about in our, in the first yep. one that I was a part of, uh, when we talked about fear, you know, I, I gave the example that, you know, fear is false evidence appearing real is the common acronym for yep. it. But the acronym that I, that I work from now is the false existence appearing real. Because through our fears, we create an entire existence. Right. And we, li- and we can live in that existence. Teach. Um, and my, the things that I've been afraid of, um, I don't know if it was, I wouldn't necessarily say it was success, um, but the, the fear of, of trying and failing. Um, and even you brought in my perspective on what it is to try. That's right. What it is to fail. That's right. And the true failure is to never even try. That's right. Um, and I thank you for that. So I, I, I recognize within my own self and maybe now is, a, is particularly now because, you know, um, I'm dealing with a lot of things uh, physically in my body, uh, just emotionally, that it's challenging at times to get up and do. Gotcha. Not that I don't have the desire, but the act, the act of getting up and doing 
can be very challenging for me. And I think it, it centers around, it's, it's easier to hide in my fear mm. than, to, than to risk everything or even trying to be, trying to be successful. Wow. Ooh, wow. Okay, I'll say that again because you got that look on your face. It's at times it's easier to hide within my fear because I'm familiar with my fear. It has a great familiarity. It's comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's been a friend to me for over 20 years. Mm, come it knows on. my habits. It knows my ins and outs. Come on, come on. It knows just what to say to get me just to settle down. It's my fear. I'm intimately acquainted with my own unworthiness. But it's easier at times to hide within my fear than the risk stepping out and being successful. So you're afraid of success. Success, failure? In a sense. Okay, I got you. I got you. Fear is a habit. Yeah. That's some dope shit right there. Damn, man. That's something to unpack. Yes, Lord. We'll ask later because I'm we we'll have a side conversation. But <laughs> right, bro, right. like I man, because I, I think a lot of people are gonna relate to that one. Um man. but fear is a habit. You know what I mean? Like if you want to break that cycle, like we really want I, I wanna unpack breaking the cycle of fear. Um and and removing that as a habit. Like Real talk, cause yeah, you grow, you you far greater than that. You know what I mean? And and what is the opposite of fear? Do we know? Does anybody know what the opposite of fear is? I'm about to make some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We gonna I, I don't it. know that there is a, an opposite of fear. And it's and it's I guess for me it's interesting because you know I grew up in the church and I, I have a, a very solid um, biblical foundation and a very solid perspective when it comes to God and. It says, I believe in James, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Therefore, we have, we have the power to do the very thing that we want to do. We, we are enveloped in his love, which provides for us strength, and our mind is sound. Mm -hmm. And a lot, there are a lot of things in life that try, that tr try people, situations, scenarios, will try to make you think so how do we hold on i'm gonna cut you off because i love you <laughs> and then we gotta roll the d because he gotta answer these questions too yeah. he can't hide in the shadows that's right um how do you believe in god mm -hmm. and allow fear to be a habit wow Wait, on that note let's move get some water <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey brother hey brother can you help him well, never mind. I mean, I, 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 I mean, right and, and it, it may be not something we unpack on this show because I, I've met a lot of people. I meet no, pastors. I, I, I meet a lot of people. I who, can answer that question. I don't just, have a problem answering. Yeah, I'm question. curious. Um, just in hearing your question, the thought that crossed my mind is: is one thing God never takes from us is our, is our ability to choose. That's right. The True one, story. The one thing He does not take from us, and and in, in reality. Being made in his image and his likeness, we have the ability to choose. True story. So even though God is God and I believe he is God, I have chosen fear. It has been my choice, which makes it the habit. I have continuously chosen mm. fear as opposed to choosing something else, as opposed to choosing God, as opposed to choosing people who have believed in me, as mm. opposed to choosing to, to accept their support and their encouragement. I have chosen fear. True story. And I think I'm just not realizing that because you asked me the question. Mm. Okay. okay. Mm. So you Break can believe through. in God all day long, but Break you can through. still choose fear. Breakthrough. Just like you can still choose sin or you can choose not to sin. Wow. You never lose your power of choice. And many of us remain trapped because we continuously, repetitively choose fear and situations and scenarios. And we make decisions that leave us in a trapped state. That's right. All Mentally, right. emotionally, spiritually. Physically, financially, situationally, relationally. Mm. So, all right. So, my man came over here, and he gave me the opposite of fear. And the opposite of fear is what we started this conversation now when we was talking about chaos and standing in the middle of it. That's right. And finding calmness. Calmness is the opposite of fear. Right. Okay. Confidence is the opposite of fear. I'm going to ask you to make this one of your goals for the rest of 2020. And since it's a decision, since we recognize that habits are decisions that we make, yep. we choose them. Yep. I need you to choose calmness and confidence in everything you do. Not, not success. 
Let's let's put success in a pocket till you can define it to be what it is you want it to be. Choose calmness and confidence. I, yeah, bro. Like, put fear in a jar. Drop that bitch off on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> like hollow. <laughs> Real talk, but I appreciate you sharing that, man, because that that means that means a lot, and man. So Thanks. I'm I'm gonna rotate this over here. Um, we we gonna brothers, we gotta we gonna we gonna connect with this, man. Oh yeah, and no, we gonna God, hold each other accountable. Absolutely, we gotta do that. So the question, because y'all know we getting ready to come to the close of the show, and right? We we gonna hold them next cards for the next show, but Mr. Demine, yes, there you right. go, right? Yes. So the first question is, what virtue do you want more of in your life? Empathy. Empathy. Yes. All right. You want to expound on that? No. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said it so calm. Yeah. Did he know? <laughs> Empathy is uh, being able to put yourself in other people's shoes. That's right. And the one of the things that I love and hate about my dad, hate is a strong word. Um, it was always made, it was always very in- uncomfortable, is that he would take the devil's advocate side. Of just about everything, which makes as an adult some decisions difficult to make. All right. And um, one of the things that has really frustrated me over the last few years now is the lack of empathy. And it's fr- it's frayed my nerves pretty bad, to be honest. Because okay. I'm like, why are you not listening? Um, I'm trying to think of a. Oh, God. I, it's this is the easiest example to make. Uh, the the when Colin Kaepernick was was actually playing, um, you know, taking a knee, and, yep. and and you hear people say, "Well, that's not the time," or you know, every all the excuses that people made. Right, right? Mm-hmm. come on. And uh, it, and I just and I've when I get emotional, I for, I ha- I don't have the way to explain it, and and I'm, and maybe I'm and unless I'm talking to a certain type of person who who is going to try to wear the shoes I wear, even though I don't know how to explain it all the way. Right. Um, that was really frustrating to me because I hear other people's side all the time. Yeah. And then, and now you've got people with, um, you know, with full circle COVID-19 and all that and saying, you know, you're infringing upon our freedoms for, for us to get, you know, I'm, and I'm obviously I'm being facetious for this example, to be able to go to the hair salon, to be able to get our, my nails done, to be able, you know, these superfluous things. And I was like, now your limited, your freedoms are being limited. Now do you get it? Now do you understand now do you see what I'm talking about? Do you see what I've been? Do you see? And I don't. I don't go through a lot of it directly. I, I grew up in. I grew up in the suburbs. I grew up around a bunch of white people, and my dad was never real. He he made me. He he was. He made it very clear that I was black. But he. But I. I had to find the, how bad racism was on my own, basically. Right. And I'm right. not saying he's like, oh, this is out there. This is out there. Right. 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 But he just. He Teach. let me find it on my own. Teach. Wow. He just didn't let me. He didn't let me fall on my face, but he let me find out on my own. Right. And so as I've gotten older, it just becomes it, 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 everything. It's everything's been magnified, and I and you you see pieces in place and all this other stuff, and it drives me crazy. And if people could just stop this 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 all this all the chaos that's going on with the wealth distribution right now would and uh, this country would be. Amaze could be amazing. That's right. If people genuinely would stop and look and look from another person's perspective and genuinely and genuinely look at it's like I have no idea what you're going through, but I'm gonna try to understand. That's instead right. of instead of making excuses for why we can't change. He's making excuses on why we can't why we can't do something. Or shifting the Shifting the conversation to something else. Yes, yes, to make it more positive for everybody. Right. I, I mean, I could go and I can go farther. Into it. This is a rabbit hole I could I could di- di- deep dive into, but I really don't want to. But that's my answer is empathy. All right, empathy. I like we we might unpack that at the next. I like show. that. I like <laughs> that. <laughs> so, what is a challenge you want to overcome? I am a little rage filled monster. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to overcome the rage. Yes. All right. Nerves afraid, man. Nerves afraid. Nerves afraid. So what are you doing to work on that? Uh, finding ways to finding workarounds. <laughs> okay. Okay. There it is. Um, 
I, I, that's one of the reasons I exercise on a fairly regular basis. Like it, I have to do it. Yeah. Or it becomes an, an unmanageable beast. Like it really, do, it, it really does. Um, you know, learn, doing, you know, breathing, like deep breathing, you know, trying to count. And I have, to, and again, I have to get better at that because I have a, like, I can go from zero to a hundred like really quick if I'm not careful. Got you. Wow. All right. Next question. Man, I'm just you. You want some help? You call us. We we work that out. I, I don't know yoga, but I know somebody that knows some yoga. We, we chakras, all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> it's le- hey, it it's levels to this. <laughs> <laughs> that is another one into the glossary. There's levels to levels this. To you this. know that you is, say that all the time, and I love it because that's trade nearing three hundred dollars. You know, hook that man up. Go, let's go, let's go. Ching. What's the last one, man? All right, last one is. What are you passionate about and want to do more? I think I've already started it. Uh, the, the the reason I started wanting to get into podcasting anyway is to get out of what um, I'm doing as a and find something that I enjoy and love doing that I could do the rest of my life and be okay with it. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I figured out I love doing is having one of this this type of this type of um, Setting setting is going to take me to get get used to because I will dodge. I if you let me, I will dodge every question you throw. We're not gonna let you. True not story, all, bro. That's not why we came to this table. Not at all. One Challenge day. accepted. Flaws That's and right. all. Challenge yes, accepted. Sir. But um, I love. I get. To, I get to know people. At least this is this is how I've always done it. I I get to know people through one on one conversations. Right. And like I love like getting to know those little like we were talking about earlier those little everybody's got a cool story I genuinely believe that and if I talk to you long, like I used to wait tables yes and once I got good at you know the job I was working I would I would play a game where if I can get if I can get these people to talk to me like talk to me talk to me not you know just ask for my order or, you know the you know the surface level surface level stuff the good thing there's no water in that. Um, if I can get somebody talks about surf, uh, not surf, uh, more than surface level stuff, they're going to tell me something interesting that I wasn't expecting, right. or that I was that because you know we all stereotype. I'm, I'm no I'm no better than anybody else, but I'm also looking to see where the stereotype doesn't fit, and it never fails. I've learned about all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Just like, so can I ask you? Because that, that's that's very interesting to me. So in a way, um, Demond does. Sounds like it's really um, your true calling. I know you're phenomenal at massages. I don't know, you know, firsthand, but it sounds like that was your true gift, anyway. It it seems that way, um, and, and and it's because I, I and it took me a long time to realize it because of where it's it's a skill I've de- definitely developed. Yes, of course. Um, because it keep like I like all my old jobs that like it comes up like, you know people say man I really remembered our conversations da 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 and then it just while I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next from massage at some point it occurred to me like that's what that's one of the things I love about massage it's it's very we do couples massages but most of the clients that I have that I've really developed strong ties to it's been conversations while they're on the table and we're just chit chat and, and you know what I do is what I do is an intimate thing it's it's intimate in a different way but it is intimate I mean people are pretty vulnerable right and um they you know obviously nothing comes out of their HIPAA laws and all that stuff but you know they you know it's like being a bartender or a therapist I mean obviously I, I can't do what yes. Tia does yes but people will pay, and I've always had a and a I, I let me let me let me say this I was roughly eight, ten, something like that. I was pretty young, and I'd only met this guy once. My great grandmother uh, was not long for this world; and she was in the hospital. And um, I remember the pastor, uh, preacher, leader of their church. I'm not sure how yep, that all works. Yep. Um, he turns and looks at me. I see as clear as day still to this day. He looks at me in the face. And he goes, "Son, you are going to have a face that people are always going to be able to trust." Wow course as a little kid i'm like huh (laughs) but that that's tends to be yes you'd be surprised what people will tell you if you just sit there and nod your head and smile i mean you'd be surprised 
Yep. You know, I've heard some crazy stuff. And I'm like, you need a doctor, but I'm glad I could be here. You know, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? True it's story. Like it, that, that's, I mean, I've been very lucky in that respect. It's, it's been interesting and, and I like hearing the stories. So I, people find people seek me out cause I like hearing them. Right. So, right. I like it. There it is. I like it. Y'all ready to wrap? Just join up. Let's wrap yes, it up. Yes. Good black people. You dig. All my good friends Whee! out there, white, green, yellow. This is Common Conversations. If you was tuning in on the Facebook Live, we appreciate you hanging out. This is us recording our podcast, and it will actually be edited, chopped up, and published at a later date. Um, and if you got to see it live, well, thanks for being with us. Thank uh, you. Fellas, it's been a beautiful day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any, any words before we part? No. Um, I would just say continue striving to be great. Uh, remember to listen to the one on your shoulder that says, I can. Yes. And uh, we'll talk soon. There it is. Hey. Yeah. Choose calmness. Choose confidence. Let fear go. Miguel? Let's rock out with you. No, I'm just playing. Let's do this. Let's be successful. No more bad days. Always challenges and opportunities. This is Common Conversation, and we're saying peace. Peace. See you next time. do the um subscribe and, and follow us joint sure do it right. hold on so for all of y'all who who out there but like okay do gotta do the podcast so you gotta do um this next piece ready go this is Gela Gela at Common Conversations. If you're listening to our podcast at Demond Does, please subscribe, hit that like button, follow us on Facebook at Common Conversations. This is the Odd Fellas. Um, if you want to know more, send us emails and messages. We do take all types of donations, but they are not necessary. Um, but we do welcome them. We love you. Stay peace, love, and hair grease. Stay safe. And we're out. That was the end. That was the wrap. We're going to chop this up. We love everybody who came out and hang out with us. Please like the Comment Conversations page. Thank you for being our friends. We love you. And uh, wives, we'll be there. Girlfriend, um, he's coming. Peace, love, and hair grease. <laughs> Glad you kept that singular. <laughs> Damn, bro. Could have been a disaster. <laughs> Mike, you might want to mute them mics. Oh. <laughs> they, they already mute. They already mute. Oh, it, and that's, it was... <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a no. That could have been the disaster. <laughs>